we doing, everybody? It is time for the Monday, August 15th, Raw Review. Lots and lots and lots of questions to be answered from last night at Backlash. If you didn't catch my Backlash review, it'll be somewhere over there when I post the links. And if that doesn't work, because they haven't before, I'll also put it down in the description box, and you can tell me if they actually work or not, because I don't find out until somebody else tells me. Um, anyways... Raw, tonight, show opens up with Triple H with an apology to John Cena, an apology to the WWE Universe, denies having anything to do with uh, Kevin Nash's interference, says he invited Kevin Nash to the arena to see SummerSlam as a friend, um, congratulates Alberto Del Rio, says, you know, more or less, that's how money in the bank goes, and uh, that leads to him introducing Alberto Del Rio as the new champion Alberto Del Rio says he never intended on cashing in Money in the Bank, but sometimes destiny just happens that way. And immediately, because we are in San Diego, we get a really, really raucous 619 chant, and I begin to gag for the evening. Uh, Del Rio sarcastically blathers on about how he's going to be a champion of the people, and he addresses the match later that he's going to have with Ray. Um... Basically, you know, he's the Chihuahua. He's the he's the guy. He likes beating up Ray. He gets up in the morning thinking about beating Ray, etc., etc., etc. Anyways, he finishes off his promo and he gets ready for his match later on tonight with Ray. Uh, just before the commercial break, we see Triple H enter John Cena's locker room, and we think something big, some big blow up is going to happen between the two of them, but it doesn't really. Truth and Marison continue their feud with a Falls Count Anywhere match. Truth and Morrison have a, an amazing dynamic in the ring. If I haven't mentioned it before for a hundred times, I will say it again. Uh, of course, be, with it being a false count anywhere match and then being all over the arena, it's an opportunity for Morrison to go to a parkour clinic. Highlight of the, one of the highlights of the match for me was noticing a, f a sign in the crowd that the cameras panned to a lot. It was a close-up of our truth with a with a wording something to the effect of "This is the new face of crazy." Um, there's kind of a funny finish. He, um, Morrison suplexes R-Truth into a very, very cushy commentator's chair, and it's like, that's not very effective at all. Until you realize that he's just sat him there so we can get a really, really dirty, almost CM Punk-like, hard knee to the face and pin him outside the arena. Or outside the, sorry, not outside the arena, outside the ring. Um, it's one of those things where it's like a suplex on a cushy chair, isn't very effective until you realize why he did that. Almost was like, why the fuck did he do that? But, you know, then, whatever. Miz comes out for an absolutely horrible segment arguing with Jared from Subway. Cuts his own Subway promo in the middle of the ring. Or, no, not at the middle of the ring. I'm sorry. Um, in that sort of alleyway between the commentator's booths and the, uh, and the ring. Comes into the ring with a very, very generic, I will be a champion again soon very, very lackluster for what we are come to known as a Miz promo. Uh, we cut to the back once again. We see Kevin Nash arriving in his big limo and his big cowboy boots because he's a big boy and all that shit. Kelly Kelly and Eve versus the Bella Twins because you know we've never seen this match before. Very, very, very blah match. Super Kelly wins, proving once again that she is the John Cena of the women's division. And towards the end of the match we see the DOD uh, being Beth Phoenix and Natalia on the rampway just watching them knowing that you know one day they're going to destroy Kelly and Eve and probably the Bellas too um, everybody's sectioning off in pairs so if they wanted to have a Divas tag team division they probably could but it would be just as pathetic as the Divas division would it not um we have our first promo for Knight of Champions. Doesn't really say much. It basically says, hey, our next pay-per-view is Knight of Champions. Because there are no matches and such and such and yeah. Nash comes out. Thanks, Triple H, for the invite. Says, before the, says, contrary to Triple H saying he didn't know anything about it, he says he got a text from the, um, from Triple H right before the main event that says, no matter what happens, stick the winner. And for those of you that don't know what that is, stick the winner means stick the winner with a jackknife powerbomb, which is exactly what he did to CM Punk in brilliant fashion last night, it has to be said. Um, and he w comes out and wonders why Triple H denies it. 
and CM Punk comes out and uh, says, you expect me to believe that Triple H told you to do it, you expect me to believe that you always do as you're told, calls Nash a liar, tells him his career is dead. Nash says, do you want to see the text that Triple H sent me? He says, no, I'm going to show you the text that my sister sent me. OMG, LOL, is that Kevin Nash? I thought he was dead. That was, yeah. And then Punk steps up, uh, wanting to fight Nash, and Nash is immediately surrounded by security guards. Um... And Punk basically says, well, if you're going to hide behind your security guards, I'll just go find Triple H instead. So, you know, I'm going to mention this again later on, because there's a point I want to make about this. But, coming back from break, we have a, um, a backstage scene with uh, John Laurinaitis talking to Nash, and says, Triple H isn't here, Triple H is in a meeting with Punk, and then Nash and Laurinaitis go for a meeting. So, very, very, everybody's buddying with somebody, and it's very bizarre. Um... Alex Riley versus Jack Swagger. This match, for all the wrong reasons, made my night tonight. Alex Riley versus Swagger. I have no interest in this match. I really, really hoped that Alex Riley would uh, would squash squa uh, squash Swagger in this match. Didn't exactly happen. The the, the pure comedy of this was amazing because you had Dolph Ziggler and Vicky Guerrero who are a bickering couple at ringside, along with <laughs> Michael Cole, Jr. and the King. Alex Riley's making fun of Vicky Guerrero. Vicky Guerrero is making fun of. Or no, sorry. I'm gonna start that one again. Dolph Ziggler is making fun of Vicky Guerrero. Vicky Guerrero is making fun of Dolph Ziggler. King's making fun of both of them. Michael Cole, who's usually a Vicky Guerrero supporter, is making fun of both of them. And both of them are making fun of Jr., who's actually trying to call the match. V uh, Dolph Ziggler finally says something to Vicky that insults her enough that she leaves the table. And in a really, really bizarre, you know, what the fuck just happened kind of moment. She gets up from the table, she takes JR's hat, wears it around the ring, puts it on the referee's head, which is apparently enough to distract Alex Riley, and let Jack Swagger get the victory. Bizarre. Bizarre. And it's retarded. And it's really, really, really retarded. But the way it was done was just retarded enough that I was laughing my ass off the whole time. So I was entertained, not that I should be. So I can't really say anything bad about this segment. Didn't give a fuck about the match, I'll tell you that much. Swagger struggled so hard for a gut wrench suplex to finish off this match. It made me laugh, and he needs to leave. He should have been cut along with some of the people, other people that weren't cut when, you know, Masters and, and Kozlov and all them were cut, and we lost Molina, but kept Kelly Kelly, and uh, not going to get started on that. But Swagger was one of the ones that should be cut. Not that he doesn't have the talent. He He's not being used. Swagger is actually one of the ones that I would love to see go to TNA. Because there's a big part of me that would love to see Swagger versus Kurt Angle. But, but Swagger is not going to be used. And he's never going to be used in WWE. Like He's never going to be used in such a way that accentuates what he can do in the ring. I'll say that, even though I don't like him. Um, after the break, we have uh, Swagger and Vicky... Uh, talking backstage, and Swagger um, compliments Vicky, says she's a great manager, she's managed champions before, she's great looking, apparently. Uh, swallow the bile on that one. But, um, starts making reference to the great managers of the past, Bobby Heenan, uh, Jimmy Hart, uh, other ones along those lines. I can't pull names off the top of my head right now, because it's 12.30 and I'm really not going to says, Vicky, it's time for you to expand the roster of talent that you manage. Later on in the night, King turns the word expand into a big, big, big joke about Vicky Guerrero being fat. But, I mean, um, is this the lead-up to us having a Team Vicky? Or, or uh, like, um, back in the day you had the Heenan family, are we going to have the Guerrero family? Because there's a legitimate Guerrero family in the history of wrestling, that would be really, really bad. Um, Punk and Stephanie backstage. Uh, Punk's looking for Triple H. Stephanie says he's not here, but as far as what went on last night, sometimes people get what they deserve. Um, I really don't see any purpose to Steph being back, but she's looking good, so I'm really, really not going to complain. If she ever wants to step in the ring again, I wouldn't mind that either. Steph is... i to move my camera. Over... There, somewhere. Oh no, she's she's hiding behind a pair of pants of mine that's hanging on the floor or on the wall rather. But behind that pair of pants, there is a really really nice but out of date Stephanie McMahon poster. Moving on. Um, 
Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne versus Otunga and McGillicuddy. Um, long story short, I love the way <laughs> that they're pushing McGillicuddy and Otunga as far away from the old Nexus stuff as they possibly can, you know, coming out with the shades and the do-rags and trying to be all, you know, hip and cool and whatever. They're getting more and more intense, like, no matter what you want to see about their gimmicks coming out to the ring, they're getting more and more intense once they get in the ring. They look like a solid team. Um, it was an upset win for Kofi uh, Kingston and Evan Bourne, who looked good in their own right, but they a ragtag thrown together team shouldn't be getting fluke victories over the champions, should they, even though the belts don't mean very much. That's that's not a good sign, is it? But yeah, that was that. It was a great, it was a good match. I will give them all the credit in the world, but the how it ended just didn't make her not how it ended. Who won didn't make very much sense. Um, that's not the sheet I want. I stacked these up in backwards order, didn't I? Oh, yes. Bear with me, guys. It's late. Rey Mysterio versus Del Rito. Eh, Dorito. Oh, God, I'm tired. <laughs> Rey Mysterio versus Alberto Del Rio for the Undisputed WWE Championship, otherwise known to me now as the UWWE C. Yeah, I take short notes. Great back and forth match. Um, spends uh, Del Rio spends a great amount of the match going for the mask. It's if that was going to be the story of the match, it was good storytelling. It's very very cliche for that to be the story in a Rey Mysterio um, match, especially with the way things are in the WWE now, where other than Sin Cara, Rey Mysterio is the only masked wrestler. Like, it made more sense when you had guys like Vader, guys like Kane that still had the mask on, guys, uh, when there was a lot of masked wrestlers and it was something that could be thrown in randomly into a match, but now it's just become very, very cliche, Ray is the masked wrestler, we might just go for his mask, but the way he did it, he would lock him up in submissions, go for the mask, hit high impact moves, and then go for the mask. It was, for what it was, it was done well, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Alberto Del Rio had another... He had a couple of really good spots in this match, and I've just listed them off. Rey Mysterio had him up for the 619, building up a big head of steam. Del Rio just came, turned around with a lariat kind of clothesline and took Rey's head off, made me smile. Um, hit the step up in Seguri on the top rope uh, to the back of Mysterio's head, which always looks amazing. And just when we thought Rey Mysterio was going to super Rey to victory with his funky little splash thing that he does. Not only does he counter with the knees up, but he counters with the knees up and immediately turns it into a roll-up and gets the win. Now, Alberto Del Rio tries to wrench the fuck out of uh, Rey Mysterio's arm after the match again. So, the only logical thing for happen is for Super Rey to be saved by Super Cena. Isn't that cute? We're gonna get Kelly Kelly in there and they're going to be the whole super family. Oh, yes. No. No, 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 no. Um... But Cena, to his credit, did try to actually grow a set of balls at the end of this match. Cut a decent one or two minute promo on Alberto Del Rio, trying to show some intensity, and he actually said ass. Oh my god. Cena, oh, he's gonna get in trouble now. He's supposed to be the good boy. He's not supposed to be using language like that. Uh, for Cena to try and be badass now just makes me laugh, because he's been such a neutered little bitch for so long now. It makes me laugh. Scores, fails, and MVPs. Oh, yes. Del Rio's opening promo. Um, after a very lackluster introduction from Triple H, Del Rio took the mic and ran with it and made it his own. Not to the caliber of CM Punk, but well beyond what I expected. Let's just say that. Uh, the Morrison Truth uh, False Count Anywhere match ending. I already kind of mentioned it, but um, just something different, you know, here, sit here, I'm gonna kick you in the face. Sit here while I kick you in the face. Oh, yes. Now, the whole CM Punk Kevin Nash thing, right at the end, right when he was about to go down there and handle Nash himself, and all the security came out, Nash was in the ring, the security wasn't even in the ring, the security was all around the ring. It was a definite, like, Austin McMahon flashback. Like, you could, anybody who was around in the Attitude Era, anybody who was watching WWE in the Attitude Era, knows how many times that happened. McMahon went out and shot his mouth off in the ring. Austin made his way to the ring, and Austin, or er, McMahon immediately surrounded himself by security. It was, an, it was an exact replicated flashback moment to that. 
little retro feel. It felt good. You know, the things that work, work for a reason. The things that are successful are successful for a reason. And if you do it properly, it's not bad necessarily to bring them back again, as long as they're not too exact. Um, not a fan of Swagger, as you know, not a fan of Vicky, as you know, but in their backstage scene, they made a lot of... Um, a lot of really, really respectful reference to a lot of managers from the past, and the manager thing really doesn't happen anymore. The manager thing has kind of been replaced by either your partner accompanies you to the ring, or some random Barbie doll that we pull out of the back goes down to the ring with you and helps you cheat. Before, that used to be the managers. That used to be the Jimmy Hearts, the Bobby the Brain Heenans, the Paul Bearers. Um, so not, I'm not holding any hope that they're going to bring that back, but it's nice that they've paid credit to that. I like that a lot. Um, during the tag team uh, match, Otunga and McGillicuddy versus uh, Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne, JR, even on air, in his own way, was saying, yeah, guys, we don't have much of a tag team division. And um, I'm not sure how he got away with that. I'm sure uh, that's not making a lot of people happy with the way he said a lot of stuff during that match. But it's, it's another one of those, yeah, we really don't have much, do we? No. He was even saying, yes, make Evan Bourne and Kofi Kingston a tag team so that we have somebody to go against the tag team champion. Because right now we have nobody. Alright, now the fails. R-Truth's new music is a mix of his old music and something else. There's a guitar riff over his old music that I know it's from something, I just can't think of it right now. Somebody out there watching Raw tonight knows what that guitar riff is from. It's from something else in the WWE. They don't mix well, and it's just bad. Um, like I say, even Kelly Kelly versus uh, the Bellas, we've seen it. It's been done to death. There's nothing else for the Divas to do until they put some steam behind this uh, Divas of Doom thing that they're doing with uh, Beth and Natalia. Like I said, if they hadn't gotten, if they hadn't fucked up with Gail Kim, if they hadn't gotten rid of Molina, and if Karma wasn't uh, doing her family shit, and of course we all wish her well, um, we could have a decent Divas division with those five to start, get rid of uh, some of the other window dressing, and look up some actual legitimate female wrestlers. But instead, we just don't. <laughs> we just don't. Um, the last fail, even though it is entertaining, and even though it constantly twists and turns and whatever, um, the title pitcher on Raw went from having one champion to having two champions to having a new champion to having a number one contender that got squashed tonight to now if you look across the entire storyline of the uh, of the WWE title right now it's a six person story isn't it right now it's Triple H Nash Laurinaitis who doesn't belong on television Punk Alberto Del Rio and Cena that is a very very watered down story for one belt. It's fine to have one champion and a lot of people fighting for it, but, you know, Nash, we don't know what his deal is. Triple H is supposed to be running the place, and Laurinaitis is supposed to be an office guy. These are not people that should have this much direct control and direct impact on the title pitcher. Well, Triple H should, I guess, with the COO thing. But Laurinaitis should never have become a character. I don't know what Nash's deal is just yet, but there's way too much watering down the WWE story, even though I'm intrigued by it, even though I definitely want to know what happens next week, uh, it's very mucky at this point, and that's a really lame way to describe it, but that's, uh, that's gonna have to do for tonight, because it's all I've got. MVP of the night, not only for his match against, um, uh, Rey Mysterio, not only for his promo at the beginning of the night, but for all the other little things he's been doing since, I'd say, last Monday. Um, just all the little idiosyncrasies that Alberto Del Rio has make him, for sure, MVP of, uh, of the August 15th Raw review. That is about it, I think, unless there's something I forgot. And if there's something I forgot, too damn bad. It's time for me to go to bed. I've been Spaz. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Guys, I need a lot more questions for this Q&A. Come on. I know you guys have got something. Don't be a stranger. I will talk to you guys all later. Take it easy. Get up.